By the end of today's video, you're gonna know exactly how to trigger calls directly from your CRM. And I'm gonna show you the most profitable use case for voice agents. There are many different types of integrations that we looked at last time, particularly pre-call integrations, live call integrations, and post-call integrations. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the pre-call integration for CRM outbound call triggers. Because at the end of the day, AI systems create value only if they adapt to the business existing systems. I'm Alejo, co-founder of Amplify Voice, where we specialize in creating voice AI systems for businesses by integrating into what they already use. Whether that's HubSpot or Go High Level, Calendly or Google Calendar, those integrations are essential for delivering the value that voice AI can provide. So if you want help building a system that actually delivers results, click the work with me link below. Now let's get into the video. There are millions of companies out there receiving leads from Facebook ads, from website forms, from calendar bookings every single day, but their conversion rates are not even close to what they could be. And what's crazy is that four out of five people that fill out a form for your service, for your product, will not buy from you unless you reach out to them within five minutes, which for most companies is not realistic. So while you're spending thousands on ads and SEO, your leads are going cold fast and you're leaving money on the table. How do you fix that? Number one, integrating with your CRM or your calendar system. In this case, I'm gonna show some integrations for Calendly, for Notion, for HubSpot. And within ADN, you can even connect to your Facebook ads directly. But not all CRMs are available for easy integrations like this one. So in some cases, we're gonna to need to use a webhook that allows us to connect to those CRMs. And number two is actually reaching out to these leads immediately. So as soon as a lead comes in, we're gonna give them a call. This is called speed to lead and it's the most profitable use case in all of voice AI because speed is the biggest predictor of a lead buying or not. So let me show you how with just a few notes, you can set this up for yourself. In our case, we use Calendly for receiving new leads and Notion as a CRM. So what this Calendly trigger is going to do is as soon as somebody books an appointment, this workflow is going to trigger and a new contact is going to get created in our CRM. And then we have another trigger that when a new lead gets created in our CRM, they are immediately going to get a call. Then our voice agent is gonna ask some more qualifying questions and all of that information is going to go back to our CRM with the workflow that we created in part three. It's gonna gauge the lead's level of interest and it's gonna give us valuable information to be ready for a discovery call. So let's see this in action. First, I'm gonna to go to our Calendly. This is our discovery calendar, which you can actually find in the work with me link below. If you want us to work together, I'm gonna to book an appointment for this coming Monday and I'm gonna fill in the details, which product I'm interested in. This is gonna be a custom project. Then what is the primary goal for the voice AI system I wanna build? What is the current volume of inbound leads and the budget? And then I'm gonna schedule this event. So when I click schedule, what you're gonna see is a new lead is going to get created. There we go. It's gonna it's gonna take me back to the YouTube channel, which you should definitely check it out. And a new lead got created with the, oh wait, that's not the right information. So now what I have to do is go back to the node where I'm creating a contact in Notion and actually insert the right information. This name is in the wrong place and the other information actually didn't get filled. So let's do that. So one very handy trick that I've taught a few times is going to executions and actually using the data from the workflow that just happened. So this is the Calendly event getting created, trigger, new contact. Okay, we're gonna use that data. Why? Because that actually has all the data that we care about. The company name, the company website, all that stuff. So. I'm gonna copy to editor, unpin, and now I'm gonna actually be able to map all the fields correctly. I simply drag and drop. So now I fill in all the fields I actually wanna know about, which is the phone number, first name, last name, email, the appointment details. And I did a little trick here that you can do in N8N, which is essentially changing the time zone. So I just wanna make sure that the time zone that I set the appointment details for is mine, which is Eastern time. So we go to date time and then set zone. And then you can literally just Google what is my time zone code for New York? And you just do it in this format and then just add Eastern time at the end. So that's gonna be the appointment details, the monthly budget and the use case and website. So now when I click on execute step, I'm gonna show you the CRM real time. Bam. Okay, there we go. And now we have Amplify Voice, Alejo Pijuan, Alejo.Pijuan, phone, and at the very end, we have all the appointment details. We've got 
the use case custom project for automated lead qualification, the budget and the website. And just so you see that this is actually real and we use this, uh, this is our CRM. Obviously, this is going to be blurred out because we don't want to leak any client information, but this is actually what we use. I just had this subset for uh, this tutorial to show you how to make it work without all the noise. And now comes my favorite part, which is that every 60 seconds, this notion trigger is going to check if there are any new contacts in this database. And so this is going to trigger. So a lead comes in and within 60 seconds, we've already engaged with them. So in executions, notion lead comes in, bam, edit fields, which sets up the agent ID and all the stuff that I'm going to show you here in a second. And then the call comes out. So what information do you actually need to fill in in order to make this call? Well, we're going to start with the agent ID. So you're going to go to your retail account, select the agent ID, which is right here at top left. I'm going to be using a agent we've used before for calendar integrations. Then we're going to set up the right number, which you can find by going to your dashboard, then phone numbers and selecting one of them. Click right here to copy and then paste it. Bam, voice agent number. Then user number is actually something we're going to get from the trigger. So the notion trigger, I'm going to open it up and then look for the phone number phone. Bam. So this is going to be able to adapt for every single lead. The name we have Alejo, company name and use case. Awesome, which is up here. Okay, awesome. A custom project for automated lead qualification. But we're not done. We actually have to write out what's called a JSON. So these, these HTTP calls, which I taught in the third part of the series, need four things. A method, which is usually post, a URL, an authorization, which is an API key, which you can get directly from API keys right here and create a new one. And finally, what's called the JSON, which is just the information that you're sending retail. From what number are we calling and who are we calling? What's the agent ID we're going to use? And then what do we want to know about the lead, which are called dynamic variables? So let's fill these in. The from number is going to be the voice agent number, user number, then agent ID, and then from Notion, all our dynamic variables. You have to make sure that you follow this structure. So I'll make sure you get this scenario in our school community. So you can just download it there. So now I filled all of them in all the first name, last name, all the dynamic variables I want to use. And on the right side, you'll be able to see what that looks like. I'm going to first execute this. So it actually gets filled in and you're going to see the from number to number override agent ID and all the dynamic variables. And that's all that we need. So you have to make sure that the JSON is respected. If you ever have any issues with the JSON it, uh, and it then tells you there's an error with the formatting, you can always just copy paste it right here in jsonlin.com, validate JSON, and it'll tell you what's wrong with it or if it's fine. And then you can keep troubleshooting some other way. And if necessary, get Cloud or ChatGPT's help. So I'm going to execute this and an outbound call is going to go out. Bam. And I should be receiving it any moment. There you go. Incoming call. Lovely. But if we're being realistic, Notion is not the only CRM out there. There's also HubSpot and a thousand others. HubSpot is a great example of what a tighter integration looks like. What do I mean? For Notion, we have to be polling every minute, checking every minute whether a new lead got created. But what if there was a way to create a super tight integration where the moment that something happens in HubSpot, where, for example, a contact gets created or a certain property changed to a specific value that you want to trigger an outbound call? What does that integration look like? And what you need to do is go to the credential, create new credential, and it's going to ask you for a bunch of information. For Notion, I literally just needed an API key that I could get in a few clicks. Why do I need all this information for HubSpot? Well, this is a different type of integration. Instead of asking HubSpot every minute, hey, does this user have something new? Now it's HubSpot letting you know, hey, here's something new. And that's why it's a different type of integration, because instead of you communicating with the system, now that system is communicating with you. And for that, you need to create an app. This is very common across CRMs. It is never comfortable. It is never easy. But for HubSpot specifically, I found a really good video. And this is the tutorial I originally followed in order to connect N8N and HubSpot. And just like this one, for whatever CRM you're using, the steps are usually the same. You're either going to need a API key that you can get with just a few clicks, or you're going to need to set up a whole app that's going to give you a client ID and a secret and then the API key. 
It is annoying, but remember that it's about delivering value to the user. So this actually adds to your AI system and allows the system to flow naturally, empowers the sales teams, the operations team, then trust me, it's worth it. But a lot of times you're not gonna need that tight of an integration. There are workarounds. And I'll give you an example. If you're running ads on Facebook, you can trigger from those ads. So a, a lead fills out a lead form, they get a call, and then after the call, whether they picked up or didn't, then the lead gets created in the CRM. Well, but again, isn't this notion? If you wanted to client to HubSpot, how do you do that? You still need to set up that whole app, right? Well, it's much simpler when you want to send information to HubSpot. For example, create a contact. I can literally just connect my account. A page is going to uh, show up for logging in. And it's going to ask me which account, choose account, and then that's pretty much it. Connection is successful. Bam. And now it's already connected. I can create contacts in HubSpot. So what is the difference between this and the trigger? Is that the trigger always has to be listening. At any point, a contact can get created, which is going to trigger this. So it needs a much tighter integration. And HubSpot is the one sending your system data. On the other hand, when you want to create a contact, you're just sending a one-time thing. Hey, here's some information. Please create a contact. So it's a much simpler integration. This one is going to take you more time and headaches. And this one's going to be much faster. But not all CRMs give you options. And that's why you have to ask these five questions when integrating with systems. What CRM do you use? What calendar do you use? What's your telephony provider and plan? Do you need real-time calling or batch calling? And what other systems need to be connected? Because at the end of the day, it's about delivering value, not creating the most complicated system possible. With just a few nodes, I am tapping into the most profitable use case in all of voice AI, speed to lead. Then again, the reality is that business systems usually don't look like this. They look more like this. So if you want my help with creating AI systems that actually deliver value, you can book a call with me below or come join our school community where I'll teach you how to become a better builder. Now in the next video, we're going into inbound. We're going to integrate a telephony provider because it is annoying for a business to have to change their business phone number just because they're integrating a voice AI system. Telephony is complicated, but there's always a way. So hit that subscribe button, stay tuned, and I'd love to hear from you. What type of use case is most useful for you and your company or your clients? Inbound receptionist, outbound speed to lead, or lead reactivation? Every business has different needs, so reach out, I'd love to help, and remember to never stop prompting.